Alrighty, so last week I was really on a rampage. Yes. It was one of the few times that we did not have any homework assignments. <laughs> Out of this class, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, you had one. Yes, yes, yes. We had, we had a, it was nobody, nobody did the hostess Twinkie. Oh, that's right. I mean, yeah. you had the opportunity and you'd let it drop. <laughs> so I threw out another challenge. I said, we're going to go and paint burger, fries, and a Coke. What more Americana can that be? Burgers, fries, and a Coke. And today we have homework. So sometimes me getting up on a soapbox works. Shame, shame. But how awesome. How many of you enjoyed that subject? Nobody did. You did? Kind of? It's not, it's, it's, the, the whole key behind doing anything like this is to create a painting that is worthy of an old masterpiece. Now, back in the day, somebody would have said, oh, let's go paint uh, a goblet and grapes, and people would go, what the hell do you want a goblet and grapes for? But then times change, and you look back and you go, wow, good idea, goblets and grapes. When La, Tra uh, La, uh, La Traviata, was first being written and first performed. It was supposed to be performed in the costumes of the era. So when Vivaldi wrote it, he said it's costumes of the era. Well, I got laughed out of the theater because people couldn't see themselves acting like that. So they went in and changed the thing saying that the costumes have to be a hundred years older than the date that it's performed. And so now people can say, well, yeah, back then they used to run around like that. We don't do that anymore. What was interesting is when you watch all ballets and operas, they do this. They do this because people can't see the now. They cannot see the now. In fact, when you used to see the Nutcracker in San Francisco, it used to be the Victorian era. The Victorian era. So like you would see all the Victorian clothing and all that stuff. Now when you go see it, Times has changed. It was said 1880, we're in the year 2000. Now it's the Edwardian area. So it's a totally different set. No more do you have the Victorian costumes and stuff. They're all the Edwardian. So they even updated that because now we can look at that. But that would have been too modern back 50, 60 years ago. It's awkward for us to paint a McDonald's hamburger right now because it's part of our era. But there are a lot of things that should have been painted 30, 40, 50 years ago that are no longer, that if you look back and go, wow, you're awake. And I talk about me painting my punk rockers. I was in litigation with my punk rockers for a year. The last thing I wanted to do was to paint them because they didn't pay rent. And I had this thing, and I was 20 at the time. But yet, when I think back, they were some of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. They were weird, but they had costumes. I mean, they, talk about Victorian dress with all of their, their layers of clothing and all of the chains and the hair dues all topped off on the top and everything pierced and, you know. I mean, it, it like, and I didn't, I wasn't awake enough at that time to paint that. There were also, you know, imagine Back in the day, if you sat out in front of Jack in the Box, <coughs> when they used to have the clown that you talked into. Mm -hmm. And imagine having a cute little painting that you did back then of the Jack in the Box clown. Remember, they blew that up. That was the end of that. One of my favorite paintings and one of my favorite experiences was in Burlingame when they were going to tear down the old theater along um, 101. Mm -hmm. so the old drive-in theater with those wonderful buildings that had the arches and all this stuff in there. So right before, I kind of felt that something was going to happen to it. So I went down there and I painted a painting on location of that. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, three days later, they tore it down. I mean, how awesome. I have a planar painting of something that's gone. There are a lot of things that you drive by thinking, oh, I should paint that someday. Yeah. There's a painting in a, a barn in Ashland that was gigantic as you drove into Ashland. And I thought, I've got to paint that someday. Mm -hmm. It burned down. They had a big oh. fire and they had burned it down. And I thought, so anyway, McDonald's. Yes, they'll be all around. But the thing is, even McDonald's goes through transformations. You guys don't are not aware of it, but see, things are always moving. Everything's evolving. 
So if you remember back at a time when you used to go to McDonald's and order a quarter pounder with cheese, it came in a styrofoam container. Yeah. And it was very ide idealized. Did any of you actually realize that they don't do that anymore? No. no? Yeah. So those things change. So part of the exercise is to paint something like right now and just trust that sometime in generations these two will be a change. I mean, the hamburgers might fall out of favor. We might not eat hamburgers ever again. Who knows? But that's part of the nostalgia. That's part of the nostalgia. So let's see what we have here. Where's the hamburger? Where's the beef? Where's the beef? So whose is this? So what were you thinking? Be honest. Uh, well, I just went to McDonald's and I bought a Happy Meal. <laughs> and uh, that mask was the prize. I was oh, surprised that it was so big. I just oh, nice. expected a little plastic thing. But that was it. And I thought, well, work with what you've got. And then I ripped open the hamburger, which was a nothing hamburger for kids. <laughs> Yeah. Burger, fries, and a cup. You know, I've had, I've had this <laughs> exercise throughout all of my classes. And almost everyone that did this thing said, I really enjoyed painting the french fries. Mm -hmm. That was like for them the most fun. Did you find that? It was, I mean, it was very nice. I just don't know if I got that, but yeah, it was. These homework assignments are not quite that easy, are they? <laughs> See, you know, these students have you know, that's why I said you need to be here kind of participating because it's a whole different thing when you're actually having to be involved with that. So where's your central focal point? Well, I, I kind of um, decided that my light focus uh, was the paper wrapper, but it also encompasses the, the star and the edge of the cup. So it's sort of a triad of, of focals. I don't know. <laughs> well, the stars, the stars, the brightest light on the darkest star, so they do focus. Your homework assignment is to go back on my YouTube's channel and go back to all of the all of the times that you and I had conversations on YouTube talking about this very subject. You do know. We talked about it yeah. because there's evidence. Let's go to the videotape. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, um, All you mentioned were things. Oh, I see. We don't paint things. Light, all right. the of Thank light you. On see, the I knew she knew it. Her. But if I don't pound this in, yeah. when I say, so what's your central focal point? I want you to say the effect of light, this, or the effect of the shadow caused by the light. It's always something else than the things. Something has to happen. So what is it that you wanted to accomplish? The effect of light on the wrapper around the hamburger. Okay. There you go. So that's good. There we go. She passed this. Oh my God, thank God. Oh, you guys have no help at all. <laughs> hey, you did a lot of You were right at the same thing. Okay, so, so I, probably, I probably would semi-agree with you. The thing that I think is really, it's, it's actually the, the shadow and the highlight on the hamburger. And that it, the fact that the hamburger is in light disappearing in the shadow, that effect is more interesting than all the things. Yeah, actually, so you're, this shadow here, right there, is what makes that. Okay. And then... So is this effect that you always talk about, is it always, it's not always the lightest light then? It, it, can, be, it can be a color, it can be a shade, shading. I get confused. I know, I do too. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Everybody does. Okay. okay, so the effect of light causes things. Okay, now yes, that's the most interesting thing. When you walk around in a park and it's daylight, whatever, things are not that interesting. But walk in a park at sunset and it could be very beautiful. The same, same path at different times. What changes is the light of, the lighting. And so 
lighting effects are the strongest effects. You could take nothing and make it extraordinary just by how you create the light. But color can be an effect. So you can bring people onto a canvas where everything's white and you got a red dot on it. That red dot is an effect. It affects you. You know, it's like the color. So sometimes when you see a red dress, in fact, you see Schindler's List and they have the girl in the red dress. And then all of a sudden you see that pile of bodies and there's that red dress in there to have you say, wow, so there's the girl. Would be your focal? That would be a focal point. So, so you could have an effect of red color. So color can be effect. Cast shadows, that's caused by light. That could be an effect. When something else becomes more important than the things, more important than the things that you're painting, that's when you've got people's interest. Because we are processing things by the gajillions every day. So something has to stand out from the noise. And so it is uh, something that is so extraordinary that you, you stop and go, wow, look at that color. Now, if you want to get noticed, wear bright pink. Mm -hmm. People are like, whoa. And no matter where you walk, you illuminate things. You know? so, so yeah, that's anything that catches your eye. Eyes are an effect. How eyes look at you and how you relate to eyes, those are effects. It's a, we're getting emotions off of them. Movement is an effect. When I do this, your brain goes, what's he doing? <laughs> so that catches your eyes. So if you're doing something moving, if you're in a field and something's moving, your eye catches on that and eliminates everything else. So you've got to find something that takes whatever you're looking at and makes it something. Okay, so that, that makes it more interesting. You've got the viewer's attention. If you don't have that, you can produce good paintings, but if you don't have it, they won't compete. When you walk into a gallery, if you're not catching somebody's eye through color, through lighting, through movement, something, you're going to blend. And so it's just by gosh, by golly, what we're trying to do is give you the power. When you look at a Rembrandt or a Caravaggio and you look into those museums and you, their walls, remember we walk by rooms where you could look in and everything's kind of like busy and all this stuff, nothing. But then you walk by a sergeant and you go, <sighs> you know, you stop. You can't even like look in. It could be a little painting like this and you go, I got to see that, you know. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. That's what I'm teaching you, is to become extraordinary. The problem is this, this painting is more of a thing painting. When I told you I want you to paint a Coke, a burger, and fries. That was a homework assignment. The last thing I wanted to see was burger, fries, and a Coke. Yeah, I heard you say that. I told you that. In fact, it's on the videotape. So that's the last thing I want to see. I want to see something happening that's more interesting than that, that I don't care what it is. So this, to me, doesn't quite have that. It's still a painting of things. Whose is this? Those are my things. Those are your things. Well, thank you for doing, thank you for doing the homework. Hungry, I can see that. So where's the central focal point? <laughs> it's a little cheese. bad over there. Okay, so you say it's the cheese. It's the light on the cheese. Do I feel that the cheese is the central focal point? Do I feel like there's an effect of light? Do I feel something that's like... No. <laughs> what do you think is missing in that? <laughs> something. Mayonnaise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, she didn't use that trump card. Mm -hmm. See, she could have said, oh, it's the red box. Oh, because she didn't say that. She so didn't she say said, that. Okay. See, the thing is, I asked her, what's her center focal point, and she goes, I don't know, the cheese. I did not, I said the cheese. The cheese. That's right. But that's not an effect, because it's kind of the same value and same color. Oh, my goodness. It, but, but the red box jumps out at you. Yeah. She could have said that. Mm -hmm. But what, then what I said was, that a really good idea? You know, let's take a look at some of the others. But it's missing shadows and highlights. Yeah, but all right. You did a good, good, good job, job there, Lisa. I want to thank you. Wait a minute. I mean, so, so what's 
so. What do you do? Change, yeah, change, change it for us. And give, visually yeah, right. paint this. What do you for do? Us? Would you do that with more shadows? I don't get it sometimes. Sometimes I don't either. It's a mystery. <laughs> I put that in the Coca Cola sparkly. More shadow. But then she said there, she just said it. puts on yeah. audience that I've heard, right? Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, so no, it's not the red box. She wants the cheese. Uh, she keeps saying cheese. Oh, it looks like the tongue hanging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't want the cheese. <laughs> Look at she's tired. Crash their bird. Okay. All right, now what do we have? Well, we have cheese. We have light hitting the cheese. <laughs> you have right. burger, fries, and coke. I thought it was coke. Burger and fries. <laughs> For a desert. But if you notice, see how that brings it up? But we could have we could have said the red box. Look at how cool that is. So how you shadow and highlight things is how you make that happen. So look at how cool that is. It feels like there's a window open and that's let now that's interesting. If you put that on a wall compared to all the other paintings. People will walk by and see this because there's something happening. Yeah, well, okay. That's an effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how you make extraordinary paintings. You've got to have that. We have one or two of them today. So, it's the red box, but even the red box fails. Uh, the test, if you can overwrite it with, with light. Lighting is the most extraordinary thing. When we look at a Rembrandt painting, it's the lighting that gets us. That's true. Well, yeah, but uh, none of us are painting like Rembrandt. Well, but I'm teaching well, you to be. Rembrandt I mean, we're not, we're not doing I'm, the old world styles. No, yes, we are. We are. What they did back always, then worked. Always? Always. What, they were masters. We're peons. Yes, for sure. You walk into you walk you you walk into well, any been, gallery. I've been you walk. In the Louvre, I know. I've you walk you things. walk into a gallery, and things pale compared to a Sargent painting. I mean, why do you think all of us artists use Sargent and Rembrandt and Caravaggio? You know, because they understood that. Modern art ruined that for everybody because they all said, oh, it's about emotion and feeling and googly stuff. It's like, no, it's not. It's about doing extraordinary things that are humanistic. You know, the thing is, the reason why we like having highlights on things is because it affects the viewer in a way. It re causes them to remember something. It re causes them to remind them of a time because everybody has human experiences. If you go to a writing class, the writer says, only write, uh, the teacher will say, only write about things you know. Because you can draw on personal experiences. Well, we all have personal experiences. We've seen light in different ways. We've seen feelings of certain ways. We've seen things move and have an effect of them. So that, that is what we're doing. Getting gross, out, sick, vomit, those are human, those are human emotions too. So if you create a human emotion in the viewer, see, I wasn't really in love with this painting when I put it up. In fact, I was thinking, what is she thinking? So when I saw this painting, I was like going, what? You know, and I asked people, so what were you thinking? Right? It's more important that I ask that than have a response. Because if I would have jumped on this, I would have said, well, <laughs> yeah. Very crucial thing about the homework assignments, you should work from life. The whole point is, is to put not a collage together of things and make it a, but it is about center, yes. It is about, is about creating, a, 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 regardless of what, and this part of the painting was, you know, to, to overcome this idea that burgers are, are whatever they are. I mean, I just wanted a still life of things that are well lit with good, well, but the thing is, it's iconic. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of behind, if, if you heard what I was saying last week, mm -hmm. is that iconic things that go away, you, right now while you're painting it, it doesn't make sense, but later on you go, wow, that was really an extraordinary. So to be an artist, to be awake, to look at things right now that might disappear like Hostess, mm -hmm. Hostess Twinkies, mm -hmm. they almost left. And I felt, man, 
I never had a chance to paint a Twinkie. Oh, no. Did and now, you? no. Really? And I still haven't yet. And if they go away, to I'm going to be in trouble. But there's a lot of things that are like that. You know? So, so the thing is, though, yes, this, is a, this feels more like an ad for McDonald's. It doesn't feel like a still life. And I kind of wanted you to kind of look at these objects as being like chalices and, and grapes and oranges and stuff. It just so happens. And I had mentioned last week, I said, imagine if Richard Schmidt or, or LaFell painted a McDonald's hamburger <laughs> meal, a Happy Meal. I mean, with all of the stuff that they normally paint in their really detailed manner, what would happen in their hands? What would we see? And we'd probably be so fascinated with how they lit it up and showed us how luminous the pickles on the hamburgers are and how transparent the paper is. They would look for things in this exercise that would have us go, wow, I never really paid attention to that. You know, and that's what artists do. Artists are here to bring more to the world. You know, most of you that have, uh, that are painting, most of you that are painting have an increased sensitivity to the world. Your world is better because you're an artist. That's true. And your job is to share that to other people. Spielberg paint, uh, does fantastic movies to show you another world from the gray, dismal world that you're in where beings from other planets come visit and play with children. I mean, how awesome is that? Mm -hmm. And so for two hours we get to escape something. People read. A poem can change your, your whole state of being. You can be in a real horrible mood and all of a sudden something well written, a poem or a slogan. I mean, some of you go through Facebook and stop and somebody will have a poem and you'll go, wow and bring you to a, a, your childhood or something. Yes? One of the things I love about transcending your subject matter, it just makes you look for, you can be looking at a completely boring landscape and you look for something mm -hmm. to paint and it's not the subject matter. So whether you like what you're looking at or not, or the conditions, or mm -hmm. you can say, I want to create, I want to capture that experience on, with paint. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're the storyteller. You, you go, God, I wish this had that, so I'm going to make that happen. But that's a, excellent. That's perfect. That's what our job is. You know? If not, we just could take photos of things. Mm -hmm. well, when you, you say fries coke in a hamburger, you are often, you're saying to us things. And so... I always tell you things. What is our things? Oh, wow. wow. That's <laughs> really okay, did you hear what you just said? I said wow. Okay. The burger, fries, and a Coke. But I, I see burger, fries, and a Coke. It's no doubt that there's French fries there or something or onion rings or whatever. Doesn't matter. But you still said wow. I said wow. What made you say wow? The light. The light. See? Okay, so it's not, it's not the things that you object to. I mean, it's almost like I feel like... I have to. I can't... Like what Rada was doing, she interpreted something. Yeah, she interpreted something. But the thing is, what I'm trying to tell you, look at this. This feels like you're looking at a Rembrandt, although it's modern subject matter, because of the use of light. Whose is this? Levon. Levon. You did a good job. You know, yeah. Not only that, she also created more icons by putting the American flag in, because what is more American than a hamburger and, you know, fries? How, how can you make burger fries and a cook stirring? Uh, that's certainly yeah. That's yeah. Really yeah. See, that's why when I give you homework assignments, it doesn't matter what I give you. I give you the bizarre because I want you to go past that and bring in something that is, that is more beautiful, where you don't care what the subject matter is. <laughs> You're, she's saying everything. She's saying everything, but yeah. you said, wow. Wow. <laughs> well, she has the dark. Everything is in the there's effect. So I'm just teaching you how to make something something, no matter what it is. Your, your homeless painting went from somebody looking like he's sitting at the airport waiting for a car. As you went into it and did plop, plop, plop. Brought shadows and highlights into it. I brought shadows in. I darkened everything because dark there's more mysterious. 
You don't have to make things dark. In this particular instance, she used the flag, which is dark, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but did we get the feeling of light? Look at the hamburger. You know, we were looking at the hamburger, um, and I said, well, you don't quite have the effect of light. Look at, we have the effect of light. So much that we're kind of interested to see, you know, those sesame seed buns and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is ordinary to extraordinary. Absolutely fabulous job. <laughs>